What's up everybody, Rabbit Hedgehog here. We're at House of Kawasaki, located near 10th and Council in Oklahoma City. And today we're gonna take out the brand new, well, you know, not brand new, brand new, but the Z400. Yeah, you know, it came out last year to complement the Ninja 400. Same engine, standard position. Fun little orange color on this one. So, same six-speed transmission as well. This one is equipped with the ABS. Great looking little motorcycle. Go ahead and look at the ergos and controls on this. All right, so on the right side, you have your engine cutoff switch. It is a fixed brake lever, not adjustable. Start switch there, key here, flash to pass behind, bright selection there, turn signal horn, and clutch is also not adjustable, but also that nice feather light one finger type clutch that Kawasaki is really well known for. On the dial here, you're gonna see a digital tachometer, digital speedometer, digital fuel, digital uh, coolant. You do have a clock there. You also have trip A, trip B, a regular odometer right there. You can reset it on that side. Of course, you have oil indication or fault indication. Of course, it's not started. That's the only reason why you see the oil indication light. Service engine, ABS, neutral, turn signals, and that's about it with a coolant warning light as well and bright. So, after looking that over, let's take this for a ride and see how she does. Alrighty, so when we're hopping on this motorcycle, this one's gonna be a little bit different than the Ninja 400. Not as aggressive of seating position, it's more upright. The bars do come up more, solid bar versus the sport bike type bars on the Ninja 400. Like I said, that clutch is just so lightweight. Go ahead and let's get her started here. All right. So the first thing that I'm gonna immediately notice on this motorcycle versus its Ninja 400 sibling is just how you sit into the bike. You know, you, you really do grip the tank with your knees. It's very much well an engaging position, but the feet aren't not as far back. They are actually more forward on this bike. Not by much though. So my feet more aligned with where my shoulders are right now. I do lean forward. You'll see that my arm does bend slightly and then leans forward to the bars. So it's not a full out bend position. It's very kind of similar there, but I'm a little bit more upright on this machine altogether because it feels shorter between me and the handlebars. As you can see, I'm in sixth gear right now. We're doing 40 miles an hour, 42 miles an hour, somewhere in there. And we're right around 4,000 RPM. So this is gonna be where this bike is gonna be at quite a bit. It's gonna be one of those city type bikes. And you can actually do some long range on this bike too. It's actually rather comfortable actually. Nice upright position makes it really easy to ride here. Engine braking is actually super good on this machine as well. And regular braking is very good as well. So you get a little bit of dive there. And if we brake pretty hard, you'll see that diving on the front fork. So it is a little bit lightly suspended. That's kind of no big deal though. Little 400 Twin is quite plucky for the city. It's just as good as the Ninja 400 in pluck. It actually has decent power coming off the line. It's actually a very smooth operating little twin. Of course, right now we're not really pressing her that much. And we don't want to. It's a brand new bike, so we don't want to be bad to it and break it up before it breaks in. <laughs> Of 
Now this road's a little bit smoother than you're accustomed to seeing me ride, but you can still get an idea of what the suspension is like. We do actually have some bumps in here that just don't show on the video. But I can tell you that, like I said, it is a very softly sprung motorcycle, but it's not anything that's bottoming out or anything with my weight on it. I weigh around 209 pounds. My inseam is 32 inches long. I'm six foot tall, so I'm kind of a weird proportion human, but I can sit comfortably on the bike. I also hit the ground flat footed just fine. The suspension is holding me just fine as well. I don't feel any weird choppiness or anything like that. Uh, when you see me brake here, you'll see that front end do that nice little dive there. And that's gonna be just because it's a little bit, you know, lightly sprung, but that's no big deal. It's not, it's to be expected on a bike like this. It's not gonna be something that's a complete like track attack motorcycle, like it's a Ninja 400 Brother. This one's more for the street ability. You can see this nice broken concrete everywhere here and that handled it just fine. Now the seat does have enough move, movement where I can, or well, enough room I should say, that I can move back and forth and kind of angle my body and position a little bit different here and there. And like I said, it, you really hug the tank on this machine. For a brand new rider or somebody who really likes to feel the machine out, I really like that aspect because you could put your whole body into the motorcycle, you can flick your hips around and it causes the bike to have a little bit more flickability as well versus uh, just doing it all by arm control and everything. Everything. All right. Getting even more broken road here so you can get a better suspension test. You can see the suspension is handling it just fine. Now this clutch is just so buttery light. That is one thing I've always been impressed with Kawasaki. Um, the clutch has always been cable operated, never like a, uh, you know, never a hydraulic clutch and they're so light, they're one finger usable. Of course, these are in some cases with an assisted clutch or slipper clutch and stuff. So it makes those clutch pulls really light, but it engages really buttery smooth and the transmission is very precise. It's not notchy at all. Of course, with this being a little bit shorter displacement, you do fly up through the gears pretty quick, not realizing you're about to hit the top gear that quickly. I'm gonna remain seated for this truck here. And I didn't even get bucked off. That one actually kind of indents itself in a little bit. So I went up and over and, and kind of into a U shape and back out. Didn't throw me off the seat. Didn't even upset the bike at all. So like I said, it is a lighter suspension, but it's really well sprung. Now the mirrors on it, are a little narrow for me. I can see a little bit behind me, but I see a lot of arm in each of those mirrors. But the image is very clean. Like I said, this engine's very smooth. It doesn't really vibrate at all when you're running around at this speed, around 4,000 RPM. It's not lugging its way down. It's doing this very well and nice and compliant. This engine braking for such a small parallel twin is actually really good. Sometimes when I'm on these kind of machines, it just does not seem like it's going to stop that well. And this one, you just start going into that compression braking and it's taking its way down nice and easy. So as you can tell, it gets up to speed, to regular road speeds wonderfully. It's very, very smooth, and it doesn't seem like it's that small of an engine. I know it's a 400, I know it's a little less actually, but it really does power this motorcycle quite well. The ergonomics overall, if you have a big hand like mine, it's okay, it actually has this nice swoop on there, so you get a good hand grip on the brake, and also the clutch as well, they're not too far away. I will say, I do long for a little bit wider bar on this, but that's not this kind of bike. It's a nice little standard. And the, so far, this uh, TFT screen has been very visible, even in the sun. 
which is currently over my shoulder, as you can kind of see by the glare off this uh, vehicle in front of me here. But I can still read it just fine. Now, fueling on this motorcycle, since we're kind of having to do this back and forth, a little bit of slow riding here, is nice and precise. I have not felt a dead zone in this at all. Friction zone is, if you're going to pull it all the way in for number one, is about a three, three and a half. So you'll see right here, I'll pull it out. Right there, about three and a half or so in the numbering. So when the clutch goes to engage. So it's not too far out there and not too close there to, to throw you off. It's perfect. Now this is a Saturday and I don't usually expect this much traffic, but we had snow earlier this week and it is, uh, you can see where it melted off over there, caused some puddles and stuff, but caused a little bit more people to be out here today since it's a beautiful day. Tomorrow's supposed to be more rain, so I expected a little bit more traffic, but not this much more, but it does let you know how the bike feels and it gets at a time to warm up. I know today we're in the upper 40s, lower 50s right now in temperature, so we're not incredibly cold or anything. But at least I get to sit here and see if any heat randomly comes off the motorcycle at all. And I don't feel anything at this time still. This bike is very easy to hold too. You can see, hopefully, maybe a little bit. I like to keep my right leg up on the brake. That way that light's on and then I just land with one foot. And this bike is so light. It's like I'm not even sitting on anything right now which is great for, you know, moving around the city if you got to do this quite often if you're in stop and go traffic. All right, back in motion here. All right, so really easy to get through these turns and stuff i mean i i mean yeah i know i'm in oklahoma there's not very much here <laughs> wish we had some better turns to really take this to to show you guys that this chassis is really flickable very lightweight and a very nice package i just like how smooth and everything is operating clutch transmission everything is just spot on with this machine Let's take her up here and see how she does at highway speeds. All right, so six gear, 60 miles an hour. You're looking at around 5,500 RPM for this 400. So it's actually turning nice and comfortably. I'm gonna go ahead and spank her a little bit and get her up to a more appropriate highway speed. All right. So for every 10 in speed, you're gonna get around a thousand in RPM because here we are around 75 RPM or 75 miles an hour and we're around 7,500 RPM anywhere between 7,000 and 72 or 7,500. Kind of a little hard to tell with the digital tachometer right there and then, but it does get up there and it's actually very comfortable. You do feel some buzzing at this speed. Of course, some of that does work its way out, especially during break-in, but really in all actuality, there's not much coming through the handlebars. It's more in my feet right now at this higher RPM and higher speed. We do have some pretty decent winds today too, and this bike is handling this perfectly. It's a nice chassis and it's handling the higher speeds just fine. There's no wobbles or anything to speak of. It's very planted on this road despite all the turbulence from the wind and the way this is going. So it's actually really nice. Go ahead and hop off here. And on these more broken roads much or once again. 
hear a little chop in my voice, but really, it's really well sprung. Getting down to first gear and just plodding along. Easy to balance too at slow speeds. It's just a wonderfully done machine. I just like how everything is nice and light to the touch on this machine. You don't have to like try to rip into it or anything like that. You just, it's like a, just like part of you. Just an extension of the body to the machine. And that's really what a good motorcycle should be. Now the sound on it, I know some people always ask how the sound is. Well, being that this is a, you know, stock motorcycle, everything stock on it, it is a very silent machine. Not very loud at all. And it sounds like your typical parallel twin, especially small displacement. So it doesn't sound like anything rip roaring. And you could probably get it to talk a little bit louder, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna let the world on fire. big hump there didn't even get bucked off the bike once again very well done Kawasaki with this machine I think I actually like this better than the Ninja 400 for the sheer fact that it's much more comfortable for somebody like me when the Ninja 400 around the same amount of time that I had with it I was already getting a little bit of, a, of an inkling of a cramp going into my right hip and this one I don't feel that way at all like I said I have enough movement in the seat that I can position my body a little bit differently here and there and that way I get a little bit of rest from the pressure points and from the uh, pinch points if you want to call it that as well you can see that the suspension is really nice yes it's a little floaty a little bit you know a little soft but it's not bad at all you could actually probably do a little bit more work to it you can do a little bit of pre-adjustment in the back and that way it does sit, does take care of a little bit on that much heavier than probably where this is set for it's probably i'm probably a good 50 50 60 pounds more than what it's preload is set for right now but to be honest, I really have enjoyed it even in this stock position. I mean, the bike rides beautifully. The fueling is beautiful. The way this thing runs is absolutely wonderful. I've getting no heat on any side of my foot or any side of my leg or anything like that. Left and right side is perfect. Bike rides rather well. It's really well put together. Everything is smooth and very easy to operate. You don't even have to think about what you're doing. This bike is just so precise and everything is just in such a predictable position that you don't worry about anything that's strange on the ergos or anything. It's just a great riding machine. All right, I hate to give it back to him. <laughs> so at any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog. Once again, we're at House of Kawasaki, as you can see here on 10th and Council in Oklahoma City with the beautiful 2020 Kawasaki Z400. I am not paid for by this dealership or uh, employee of this dealership or anything. I'm just a madman with an opinion that really loves motorcycles and getting people on them and knowing what they're about to do. So at any rate, keep that shiny side up, folks, and we'll catch you on that next review. What's up, everybody? This is the Rabbit Hedgehog, and once again, thank you for watching our videos. If you like what you see, please like, subscribe, mash that notification button. That way you get the latest content as it comes out from us. We are thankful for our viewers. We are also thankful for our sponsors. We have Law Tigers, Motorcycle Lawyers Nationwide. Right now they are out there riding with you because they are part of our community. But if you are in trouble and in need of assistance with any accident or any motorcycle law question, give them a call. They are at 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 1-844-533-2914 or visit lawtigers.com. Also, if you're looking to protect your engine with quality synthetic lubricants, give Doug Crawford a call. He's with USA Synthetics distributing AMS oil products. He can be found at usasynthetics.com or 405-388-6170. And if you're looking to protect yourself, 
protect your ride or protect your house, whatever it might be. Give Derek Inlow and Associates a call if you're in the Oklahoma area. He will be able to help you out and protect whatever you might have. Give him a call at 405-261-1010 or visit InlowInsurance.com. Once again, thank you for watching. Have a great day, and we'll catch you on that next ride.